All right, so Joe Biden is out with a new ad all about how world leaders are laughing at Donald Trump. Of course, all the establishment people, they all the punditocracy, yeah. the pod save dudes, yes. they all freaking <laughs> loved it. Um, so we want to play it for you, but as you're watching, pay close attention into, in particular to this one scene where Trump is speaking to the UN General Assembly, and we'll tell you why afterwards. Take a listen. World leaders caught on camera laughing about President Trump. <laughs> Several world leaders mocking President Trump. They're laughing at him. My administration has accomplished more than almost any administration in the history of our country. <laughs> Didn't expect that reaction, but that's okay. The world sees Trump for what he is, insincere, ill-informed, corrupt, dangerously incompetent, and incapable, in my view, of world leadership. And if we give Donald Trump four more years, we'll have a great deal of difficulty if ever being able to recover America's standing in the world and our capacity to bring nations together. All right, Sagar, there was that part yeah. caught the eye of a lot of conservatives. It this did. On and something that popped up in your world. Look, this is, it's insignificant. It doesn't actually matter. But the truth is, is that that, uh, that laugh track was actually deceptively edited. It was cut out for the part when Trump, I think he'd made a joke or he, he'd said something. So they added the laughter and sped it up immediately to the point after he said, my, my administration has accomplished more than anything in history. Now, so it makes it sound like they so laughed more. it makes more. it sound like they laughed. They actually laughed at that was the actual statement that it said instead of the pause and the joke that had followed. Okay, but th let's think about this. If this had been, these are the same people who freaked out whenever Trump posted a photo, a meme of him putting a medal of honor <laughs> on the dog who went after Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. And anytime he tweets like a meme of Joe Biden being creepy to himself, they're like, this is a doctored video, deep fakes, and it's from the presidential Twitter account. And, and it's like, nobody cares cares the fact that Joe that Joe Biden did it in his ad and it's like look yeah. like i said Doesn't are matter. we being snowflakes like freaking out about something no but i'm i just want to highlight how when the media makes us live through these complete idiocies and these stupid scandals every single day and they don't apply the same standards, right. that is where people lose their minds whenever it comes to the double standard. Remember that whole um, witch hunt for that like one just like random guy who had edited the Nancy Pelosi yeah. video uh, and there was like, they hunted him CNN down and they like, found like, down. yeah, yeah because uh, and look, yeah. I get the concern. Or the Daily Beast. Sorry. I, get, I yeah. get the concern over deep fakes. I get the concern over people being manipulated. And I think that is real, but mm. also it ignores the fact that like advertisers yeah, capitalism is manipulating time, us guys. all yeah. the time, all day, right. every day. That's poli I mean, politicians have been doing that all the time, all day, mm -hmm. every day. But yeah, there's an extra panic around it right. when it comes from Trump. From Trump. That he tweets it's it, not... that it's in his videos or whatever. There is an extra level of panic right. around him that isn't applied. I, I didn't know about this. I didn't see this at all no. in my, you know, in my if windows my friend, that I'm gazing into. If my friend Peter Hassan had not caught it in a, in a deep and within a Fox News article, nobody ever would have heard about it. But the reason I wanted to highlight it is is because this media corruption, this media double standard, it goes both ways, and they gaslight everybody, right? That's like, it. they gaslight us into thinking that Trump editing a meme is in some way important to anybody's lives, to tweeting a, a, a meme of a dog getting the Medal of Honor, or <laughs> of, a, a, of, an, a, you know, of a meme in which Joe Biden is edited into, like, being creepy to himself. These... It's BS, and people are so sick of it. And yet, Biden does it in one of his ads, nobody cares. Yeah, yeah. well, and again, it's because Trump triggers them. His crass right. behavior and violation of the norms of decorum are what trigger them more than anything. Mm -hmm. So they think <laughs> that the, like, destruction of democracy and the rotten society is because of his, like, yeah. tweeting memes or right. whatever, when actuality, most people in the country see that, like, the hollowing out of America, like, those are the people right. that, the, the people that crashed the global economy and never faced any consequences. Like, those are the people doing real damage to society, and where we don't see any outrage about that. And that's the thing. They, these people cannot understand why anybody would vote for Trump. So they have to believe that they got tricked they by Russians. They don't want to understand. Yeah, they don't want to understand. You're right. They, 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 they have to believe that they got tricked by memes, doctored videos, Facebook ads, Russian, uh, Russian bots, or ads that were, you know, cost a million dollars, which if you know anything about campaign finance is nothing. Or, that, yeah. or voters are just racist. Or that they're absolute racist. Yeah. <laughs>
That's all they can understand. They can't, they, like, they think that that's why they think that these trivial idiocies are so important relative to the global financial crisis, to the hollowing out of America, to the manufacturing index, which we try and talk about here on the show. These are the structural reasons that have caused the displaced and the angry in order to make their voice heard through the one voice, the one way that they have left, the one last avenue of power, and that's the vote. And they can never understand that. Do you remember that quote yeah. that Hillary had, one of her many, like, excuse, series of excuses mm -hmm. for why she lost? And she talked about how she won the places that were thriving and growing and optimistic. Right. Her language was very close. I'm mm -hmm. not getting exactly, but it was very close to that. It was like, well, does that cause you to do any self-reflection? Like, the Democratic Party is supposed to be the party of the dispossessed. It's supposed yeah. to be the party that's championing the places that are not succeeding, that are not thriving. And so the fact that your appeal was only to the places that were successful, that have benefited from this hollowing out of most of the country, mm -hmm. like, that's not a positive. That should be making you think, <laughs> where did I go wrong that that's the case, that basically, like, the upper middle class and the affluent of the world, of the country, are the only ones supporting me? That should have triggered some soul searching, yeah. but instead she sees that as, like, oh, well, these other people, they're just bitter and they're, you know, the Obama bitter, clean right, to their bitter. guns, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Or, yes. you know, they're racist or they're sexist or whatever. There's something wrong with them. That's why they're being left behind. Because to, to think otherwise would force examining the decades-long policies mm -hmm. that her husband and her were integral into putting into place and they will never They'll do never that. They'll never do it. All so right. that's how we turned a segment about a deceptive video into what's really wrong in America. Indeed. <laughs> As we do here at Rising and we'll have more for you after this.